Hello and welcome in this session we are going to see how to backup and restore data in Google SQL for PostgreSQL. So as usual uh, you will see everything is uh, there in a notepad and we will walk through it and after this we will uh, perform a small demo. So this is all about how to schedule and turn off the automatic backups, how to create and manage on-demand backups, how to view the backups of your cloud SQL instance. So one of the things which, uh, which, which has been asked, like everything is self-managed. It is just a few clicks you do and everything is done. What's, what's the special about? The special thing about it, if you are learning on-premises environment and if you try to do the uh, managed instance, if you try to do some hands-on on, uh, managed instance, the best thing which will come out is you will know the concepts very well and that will help uh, you in discovering more things when you work on uh, infrastructure as a service instance or if you're working on an on-premises instance. So let's directly go ahead and perform a small demo. We have the uh, managed instance which is already running in Google Cloud. We have uh, Postgre 13 which, which is already launched. So what I will do is uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, expand it. You, you can see there are the several options. So in the backup options, what you will do is for the automated backup, that is the first thing which you have to do. This can be a configured during the launch of the instance or this can be done later on also. So I'll go ahead and start the edit and in the edit section, you will see automated backup and point in time recovery. So when you say automated backup, you mentioned the timelines when you wanted to take the backup. Let's say I wanted to take the backup during the quiet hours when the application activity is least and it is going to perform the uh, it is going to utilize the minimum amount of uh, of the uh, uh, what do you say it is going to utilize your maximum amount of uh, uh, the resources for the backup and in the advanced option only we will say choose where to store your backup so we will say choose a multi-region which is going to spread across the nearby regions only and by default we'll say take seven days of backup this can be anything between one two three sixty five so it is one two three sixty five by default uh, you can do it for the seven days and in PostgreSQL you have something called as transaction logs which are known as wall ahead uh, uh, wall files uh, wall ahead logging so what it does it uh, contains all the transactions which has happened in your database so in basically this is all the updates inserts and delete what happens in the data in your database whatever uh, uh, the operations happens which changes the data those informations are captured and they are uh, written in wall log files so in case you have to restore your database to a point in time recovery you have to use those so i'll say enable point in time recovery so it is saying allow you to recover data from a specific point in down to a fraction of a second and uh, uh, it is via right ahead log archiving make sure that your storage can support the days of logs you are uh, retaining so in our case uh, we have an instance which is of just few gb but in real production environment where you need to enable this you make sure you have enough storage so that there is a room to store those uh, wall files i'll just go ahead and do save it is getting saved so what is happening is the scheduled backup you will be able to see over here and immediately after this uh, uh, any backups which is uh, the number of backups which are going to happen is uh, seven it doesn't mean that uh, seven days backup will be available over here uh, but in a, a but about the wall files which is right ahead login we have said it should retain for the seven days in that case uh, every day the older ones will be paused and uh, the the other ones which are there in the window they will be available over there but there is uh, the same is not true the, for the backup so they can go beyond that so make sure that you have enough room for your backups and your wall file so th while this is getting uh, kicked off you will see uh, uh, backup type 
the location and the description if you have mentioned anything otherwise they can be uh, let, let, let us okay let us see how it looks like once it is uh, a spin up so the back backup is getting configured that's scheduled backup they are not the uh, what do you say uh, Okay, this is, so you can see that backup is scheduled. Uh, this is automated backup. This is multi-region and description. You can mention anything in case you wanted to restore the backup, which happens, you can restore it from here. So either you restore it on the same instance so that it is going to wipe out whatever data is there or a compatible uh, instance let's say postgre 13 is there so you can restore it on the postgre 13 instance if you have created a new instance so it is going to restore over there in case i wanted to continue with this i can do that but we want to do one more thing we'll go to the backups we wanted to create add-on backups and add-on backups you do not uh, by default uh, the policy retention policy will not be applied over here so manually you have to clean them up so i'll say this is ad hoc backup the spelling is wrong okay location option so it is going to take the multi-region and i'll say create is there anything special about it no there's nothing special about it it's just like there are different options and how to restore from them we already saw when we have an automated backup you can restore it from here but when you have an on-demand uh, okay let it come out so you can see that type is on demand and uh, this is automated backup we'll go to the overview and we go to the all instances over here i'll dismiss this hide this panel and from here in case you okay this is a still getting backed up the ad hoc i wanted to see how can you restore from an ad hoc backup to point in time recovery to a different instance so i'm going to hide this we'll go here and we'll say uh, create clone i'll say uh, create the clone and this by default it has taken this kind of name uh, just for the identification purpose in case you want to do something else you can do it so clone current state of the instance we want it to clone from an earlier point in time so you can mention the point in time so whatever wall logs are there it will if they have been backed up they are available they have some data even though it is not there it will put your instance to a particular point in time so you can mention the time and it should be able to uh, uh, recover till that point in time so i'll just say h01 pm so it is going to do that i'll just say create clone and the instance will be cloned so this is this is just the basics about uh, the uh, on demand backup or the uh, ad hoc backup or your scheduled backup so you have different options available and uh, you have the uh, recovery window also available over here retention period also mentioned there where where it is between 1 2 3 65 and uh, they will be cleaned up uh, as per their retention policy the only thing which you need to take care about the wall logs so when you set the uh, log retention to two days that means or the seven days that means uh, every day it is going to see anything which is older that means let's say if i'm saying eight days of retention period for the wall during the uh, backup retention then anything which is beyond that older than seven days they will be removed the same thing is not true for the backups it is going to check the number of backups which has happened in the last uh, seven times so uh, those are the scheduled backups so you need to just be 
very careful about that and when we talk about the disk usage and point in time recovery you make sure you have enough room for those uh, logs to be stored there so that they don't get purged so you just have to make sure about that and that's all the basics about how we perform the uh, backup and recovery from an um, uh, cloud sql for postgresql instance in google cloud i hope this is going to help and thank you